Hey, Reba. Can't take him with you. Oh. Why? Christmas. Reba. Sisters. Sisters, sisters, there were never such Reba! Sister. What? Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Is that thing on? Hi, I'm Reba Hervis, Artistic Director at Overshadowed Theatrical Productions. Today, we have the opportunity of talking to Margaret Sally and Deborah Schott, who are the costume designers for our version of Noah. Well, hi, I'm Margaret Solly, and I work for Overshadowed Productions up in the sewing room as an assistant seamstress. It's great fun, and I work with a lot of really cool people. I've retired now, and I've come out of 22 years at Awana Club International and enjoyed working with that ministry as well. I'm Deborah Schott. Uh, I actually call myself a contraptionist, actually. Was an engineer, and I take all of that information and the creativity that God has thankfully given me and just create contraptions. I love that. I, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about your overall vision for the costume design for the show. People may or may not be aware that the overall planning for a show starts with the director's vision but is aided and made better by what each one of the production heads adds to it. Can you tell me about what yours was for costume design? You want me to start? You know, because actually the vision is Deborah's. I always have considered myself a behind the scenes and she is incredibly uh, a visionary that can see things way beyond what I can see. So I enjoy working for her. So basically her vision is my vision. <laughs> Margaret. That is such a cop out, and I am not gonna let you get away with that. We all know that you give your own ideas for costume designs, and you're really cautious and put a lot of input about whether something's gonna look right on a certain body type. So I'm not gonna let you get away with that at all. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the vision starts, of course, with Reba's uh, casting of her mm -hmm. overall vision and uh, some of the uh, assumptions that she made for the show overall gave us a lot of flexibility because we decided that we didn't know how technologically advanced they were before the flood. So we have definitely taken metallurgy, textile, sewing, which gave us a lot of options. Um, so the first act vision, because they were interacting with the town that in theory is fallen and sinful and potentially ostentatious, maybe a little sexualized, um, the clothes are a little more daring than Overshadowed sometimes goes to. We have all kinds of metallurgy in our jewelry. Since we knew that all peoples and all cultures come out of Noah and his family. Um, I tried to deconstruct that by having everybody that we could think of ancient wise, there's some sort of a reference in our costumes, primarily in the first act. So in the second act, when they're actually on the ark, um, I have my little rooster here because the, our inside vision for that was, well, would they wear it when they were feeding the chickens? I went back to understand what would traditionally have been considered. So a lot of things are about cutting a hole or tearing a hole with your teeth maybe, sewing potentially with a bone needle, large thread, and, and very rough hewn. It fascinates me so much when Deborah can take a rectangular piece of material and and drape it over an actor and have it fall into folds that I could never begin to create. And it's just fun watching her work and then allowing me to do some of the, the tidy up work that goes along with fixing the rest of it. Honestly, I'm a little sad that people haven't asked a lot of questions or made comments about the costume plot. You and Margaret have created a very unique, beautiful costume design one that so clearly is original and not traditional biblical. Can you tell me what your favorite costume is or maybe a concept that you tried to add that maybe is unique to this show? Well, I just saw one of my favorite pieces because Margaret just made it and brought it in this morning. 
specifically inspired by work that Diana Silliers, a South African designer, has done. She had some fabric type necklaces in there that Reba and I just loved. And it, and it is fun working with things that are entirely different. So when you, when you think that this goes on a couch and then you can make a necklace out of it, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's just fun. I could totally wear this as a statement piece with, you know, mm -hmm. a sheath dress to anything. We may have to, we may have a business here. Yes, the think? money we could make. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the costume that that goes on that is my favorite. It was the most complicated. I thrilled by it the way that it moves the way mm -hmm. that we got to play with the the pat creating the pattern pieces yeah. two actresses will wear it so it was it was really fun and the product so far has been impressive well i think the my favorite thing that i have gleaned from the both of you is that the idea that we get to think outside of the box when creating costumes that it's not just about going to the fabric store and getting the traditional elements that would be used in sewing, but instead you guys get to go to the hardware store and buy plumbing parts or go to an upholstery store and buy curtain poles and all of a sudden you add it to a costume to really make it a beautiful design that is unique and only yours. So now, how long did it take you to read the script, design the costumes, and get it from that beginning moment to dress rehearsal. You gonna come up with a number of hours? No. We've done hours before and it's into the thousands. My first process is a lot of research. I literally have been studying movies and the number of Pinterest <laughs> boards that I have is embarrassing. From that, I read the script, get an idea of personalities, and then I start segregating the boards, then I edit. And editing's the hardest part for me because I want to do it all. <laughs> yeah. Then draw the outfits, and I've done this for years. <clears throat> After she's got all these pictures drawn up and everything's kind of organized in her head, which really is a lengthy process, then we need to start finding materials that will match and go along with the, with the costumes that she's in her head found. We've got to get the colors, and we've got to get the, the textures, and we've got to get things that are interesting. And that in itself is a process that can take quite a while. Reba, mm -hmm. Margaret, and I got to work with an amazing haul of fabric donation that we received. Do you remember who it was from? I think the name was Material Girl, and it was in Crystal Lake. Who has switched her store to be completely quilt fabrics now, and it had been fashion and quilt. So all that she gave us uh, probably did 90% of the show. Oh yeah, easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we still have some left. So that donation really was timely. God knew exactly what was gonna happen. We've been really blessed with a lot of donations from a lot of people. I'm wondering how working on this script has impacted you when you read or think about the story of Noah and the Bible. You want to start that? You know, when we're talking about the way the Lord has provided for us, not only with the materials and the upholstery and different supplies like that, Deborah and I are always fascinated when we're sewing on a project and we'll get to the end of it, we'll make the final seam and we'll look down and we have six inches of material or thread left on our bobbin you know, no extra, nothing. So it was, God's just looking over the tiny details as well. The, the moment that I will never forget, the day that I came in and Yo had his work gla uh, gloves on, he had worked so hard with the small pine forest of trees that his hands were bleeding and he wasn't even yes. aware of it. We pray over every design oh, yeah. and sure enough, we had designed gauntlets that had a pad in the hand, not really realizing how much they're actually man oh, handling, sure. manhandling the, the wood. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to share your vision of Noah and actually the time that it takes to create the costumes. I appreciate you both so much. I was wondering if there's anything you would like to add in closing. 
I'm thinking that uh, one of the things that struck me was each of the actors that comes in, they have their own personality, they have their desire for how they want to look in watching the first run through completely and noticing all the different personalities that God put on the ark and how they learned to uh, work together and get along together and understand each other and whatnot. I kind of feel like that when I'm up in the sewing room. And I'm always blessed by the fact that it takes a village to, to do anything like this. So the list of uh, seamstresses and non-seamstresses alike, show after show, year after year, really just amazing how many yeah. people um, it takes to make this happen. Yes, and anybody that wants to come join us, we'd love to have you. <laughs> I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of From the Wings. Until next time, this is just me talking to you from the wings.